As a young scientist considering a career in drug discovery, you may wonder how does the pharmaceutical industry work? What skills do companies look for? In this video, we'll talk about 10 different types of scientists on the drug discovery team. There are a lot of opportunities in drug discovery. Drug discovery involves a wide range of disciplines that involve chemistry, biology, pharmacology, biochemistry, etc. So 10 is a ballpark number. That's why I put 10-ish in the title of the video, because the number depends a lot on the setting on the company as well. Different companies can have different titles for the same position, and different companies can build their team differently depending on their specific needs. For example, a drug discovery team for a small molecule drug versus a biomolecule drugs like vaccines or monoclonal antibodies could be very different. Because for biomolecules, you also have to think about formulation and some other aspects. Today, we'll focus on the small molecule drug discovery scientist and talk about it from three different disciplines, which are biology, chemistry, and interdisciplines like biochemistry. If you are currently in high school or college watching this video and want to be a team that delivers life-changing drugs to patients, I think this video will be really helpful to you to decide which specific direction you want to be an expert in. Let's start off with chemistry since I'm a chemist. First, we have medicinal chemists. Medicinal chemists play a very crucial role in the drug discovery process. They are the ones that design and synthesize the potential drug candidates for testing, and they interpret the testing data, such as efficacy and safety data, to come back to them, so they could brainstorm ways to improve the drug designs. Medicinal chemists really come from a synthetic organic chemistry background, because their jobs involve designing and synthesizing some very synthetically challenging molecules. So if organic chemistry is your absolute favorite, you could be a great medicinal chemist. Next, we have computational chemists, which is what I do. Computational chemists need to have a pretty good grasp on modern physics, but more on the application side and less on the mathematical or theoretical side. So if you're not really good with mathematics like I am, don't worry about it. But we do need to have a systematic understanding of quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics, which is many of the tools we use are based on. On top of that, we need to have a pretty good understanding of structural biology as well because we work very closely with medicinal chemists and structural biologists. And because we work so closely with them, we need to have a decent understanding of uh, organic chemistry too. And our job is to help medicinal chemists design better drugs using computational tools. And we can help them eliminate some of their design ideas so they don't have to synthesize and test all of them. And hopefully in the future, I want to make a video and go into more details about the role of computational chemists on the drug discovery team. But if you're passionate about physics and love working on a computer instead of a chemistry bench, computational chemist is a job for you. Branching out from computational chemists, we have machine learning engineers. Machine learning engineers are more on the computation side than the chemistry side because most of their trainings are in computer science and mathematics. We know AI has become a bigger part of our life in many different ways, like facial and speech recognition, predicting which YouTube video we like to watch, or which Amazon item we like to buy. One reason is that algorithm develop is getting better and the hardware like CPUs and GPUs are getting cheaper, especially with service like AWS, Amazon Web Service, or Microsoft Azure. Machine learning is getting more affordable and more efficient. Same story in drug discovery. AI and machine learning have really started to take off in drug discovery and pharmaceutical companies have a lot of data and they need a machine learning expert to analyze them. Last but not least, on the chemistry side, we have analytical chemists. Their job is very important because the team needs data to confirm the structure of the molecule and the purity of the potential drug candidates. They also help medicinal chemists perform a thing called high-throughput screening, that is when we have a large library of compounds, they can quickly screen through them against the protein of interest. Analytical chemists have many different tools under their tool belt, such as NMR, liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, supercritical fluid chromatography, HPLC, etc. If you really enjoyed your analytical chemistry class and using and developing analytical instruments, this is a job for you. Now let's talk about the biology side. First, we have molecular biologists, or sometimes called cellular biologists. They help the team design and maintain different cell lines for drug testing. 
because in preclinical stage, it is very important to understand the function of the drug and target protein at a cellular level. Molecular biologists can engineer the cell lines by introducing different mutations and run biochemical or cell-based assay on drug candidates to test the potency or the efficacy of the drug. And also cell biologists can play a very important role in understanding the drug resistance and drug toxicity as well. Another very crucial role on the drug discovery team is structural biologists or biophysicists. They help the team understand macromolecules such as proteins and RNAs from a structural perspective and also how altering the protein structures such as introducing a mutation could change how the protein functions. And structural biologists can branch out into many different roles that focus on the specific areas because each of these areas can be a beast of its own and takes a lot of uh, time and advanced knowledge to be an expert in. Just to name a few here, we can have structural biologists only focus on protein expression or protein purification or proteomics. And on the instrumentation side, we can have structural biologists only focus on CRAL-EM or only on X-ray crystallography. And with protein uh, CRAL-EM or crystal structure at hand, we can advance our knowledge of uh, mechanistic biology. Next, we have computational biologists. Computational biologists are experts in many different disciplines as well besides biology, such as bioinformatics, computer science, mathematics, statistics. They analyze and dissect large amounts of data set at the molecular level, such as proteomic or genomic data to help identify the genetic basis of the disease and help predict protein structure, etc. Now let's move on to the interdisciplinary side which integrates chemistry and biology along with other subjects like pharmacology or toxicology. First, we have bioanalytical scientists. Bioanalytical scientists can come from many different backgrounds that include chemistry, biology, biochemistry, pharmaceutical science, or any related field in general. Because the research in all those disciplines can run bioanalysis for biological samples. They also use tools that uh, analytical chemists use, such as mass spectrometry, LCMS, HPLC. They do experiments to th study things like the cell permeability of the drug, how fast is the absorption of the drugs, how long does the drug stay in our body, or how fast the drugs will be metabolized out of our system. So sometimes bioanalytical scientists are also called ADME scientists, with ADME stands for absorption, disposition, metabolism, and excretion. So basically the four aspects of how the drug performs in the living system. Then we have biochemists who could have different responsibilities depending on the need of the team. They could work with bioanalytical scientists to develop biochemical or biophysical assay or cell-based assay to perform analysis on drug candidates, or they could work with structural biologists on protein structures to unravel the protein functions, or they can offer troubleshooting for X-ray crystallography or crowd em Biochemists can also work with biophysical chemists, sometimes called enzymologists. Enzymology integrates many disciplines as well, such as biochemistry, molecular biology, biophysics, microbiology, etc. The goal of enzymology, like the name suggests, is to study how the enzyme works, such as the kinetics and affinity of protein-drug interactions, uh, the structure of the protein, and their relation to each other. So if you want to be an enzymologist or a biochemist, uh, having a pretty decent understanding of uh, physical biochemistry is a must. We also have toxicologists, whose expertise spans disciplines like molecular biology, physiology, toxicology, and more. Toxicologists play a very important role in early and late drug discovery process. Early on, their focus is more on screening a large compound library to limit the most toxic ones. And in the later stage, prior to clinical trials, they oftentimes focus on a few promising drug candidates to study their safety profile more thoroughly. Because prior to clinical studies, physicians need a toxicity evaluation of all the drug candidates seeing animal models before they can run trials on patients. As you have probably already noticed, a drug discovery team is very large and complex. 10 types of scientists is really a condensed list, but it doesn't mean that the scientists I forgot to mention are not important. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, different drug discovery teams in different companies do things differently. 
but every team has scientists come from drastically different backgrounds and trainings, and we work together as a team, trying our best to deliver the best drug possible to patients. So if you're in college or graduate school right now and want a career in the pharmaceutical industry, drug companies are always seeking the best scientists they can find. Thank you for watching this video. If you have made it this far, I really appreciate it. Please leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you.